Hey guys, so another video today uh, for more accessories to go here on the Razor. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to put an audio system in here and this particular system is made by Rockin' Radios. Uh, so what we've got, we've got the box I got to cut open and just took my address stuff off just for my own personal reasons. And let's take a look at what comes inside. So it looks like it's packaged pretty darn well just on what I'm seeing. Uh, what we're going to have today is it's called their quad pod. So it's going to have four lighted LED kicker speakers. Uh, it will have uh, the console system and then I did a, an upgrade on it with the Rockford PMX2 head unit. I guess this is hardware right here. So we'll set that aside for a moment. Okay, so here's the star of the show. Like I said, this is the quad pod. Um, this is uh, everything they make in-house as far as the enclosures go. Super nice looking just so far. It's got a built-in cab LED. These are LED lighted kicker speakers. They're six and a halfs. And then like I said, I got the Rockford PMX2 head unit. Uh, and one of the cool things about this system that I'll get into here in just a little bit later uh, is that this piece of the console is actually interchangeable. Uh, so it kind of allows you to grow into the system. All right, here's a good look at the back of the unit. Uh, if to, just to orient you, this will be facing the front of the razor and then that is the back. Uh, this is a separate piece that's going to be used for mounting. I'm going to assume it will be used like this, but I haven't gotten into the instructions yet. And then of course they give you uh, the wiring for where you can run everything. Um, so you've got a positive, you've got a negative, and then let's see, power for antenna. Yep, okay. And there's an antenna plug right there. So let's dig into the instructions that were included in here. We'll get a little better idea of what we need to do next. Here's a quick look at the contents that come with the radio. Uh, they include the, uh, this is like the foam tape, I guess you would call it, with an adhesive back. Generally, it's used to put in between things to prevent rattling. These are plastic cage clamps. Uh, looks like they probably actually engineered these, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then this is power wiring, just a pre-made little harness that will be connecting to the wires we just looked at. So I'll give you a sticker. Uh, some stainless hardware, it appears, which I approve of. I always want to have stainless in, in my unit just to prevent rusting and, and whatnot. And then looks like some uh, ring terminals. And then this is the remote that actually controls the LED speakers. And they do give you some what appear to be very detailed instructions. So that's always good if you have questions. This is a diagram of how it mounts. That's the big aluminum piece that we looked at. And then these appear to be the cage clamps. Uh, so three cage clamps and then one on each end of the aluminum piece and then additional instructions. So um, what I will do now is I'm going to go ahead and actually hook this up to the unit just to verify everything powers on before we spend a bunch of time putting it in and we will then jump into mounting the unit into the race. What we're doing is we are running the power and ground wire and I'm going to just show you quickly how I've got that ran and make it really easy for you. And one of the nice things is uh, this, this wire is already insulated uh, and it's rigid enough that it's easy to run up to the cage. So here's the other end of the wire. Right there. And it's coming through the cage hole and it runs down the A pillar out right here. This is just excess stuff. It's going to be my subwoofer RCAs and then this is my light bar wire that I'm going to clean up while I'm doing this. And then it just runs down into the fender and what I chose to do uh, is use a hole that I had already tapped for something. Uh, I'm just going to run it through here and then probably behind the uh, antifreeze reservoir. So with the wires run, next thing you want to do is grab your cage clamps. One, two, three, four, five. We've got those in position. And then take the aluminum, I'm just going to call it a bar, uh, put it on here and then you'll do washer on bottom, washer, lock washer, and then your nut. And I've just got those loosely in place for now so I can have a little wiggle room to move things around. And I'm going to set this into place. And then the next thing that'll happen is these uh, mounting screws up here are going to go through the clamps that we just put up the three on the front. These are kind of the things that on these installs uh, that I like to really show because I'm doing this by myself with, without a second set of hands. Uh, and you can see that I've got this thing just hanging in there right now. These clamps are plenty strong enough and this console really isn't all that heavy. Uh, so I'm not worried about it damaging anything as far as the mounts go up here. Uh, but I want to show you what I did in case you have to do this by yourself. So what I did is I started by um, putting the, the screw 
in the nut through the middle one just to let it hang. I didn't let it sit there very long. I had my hardware ready, just set it right here on the dash. And then I put this side in, everything is loose right now, and then it's all up there to hang. Now what I'm gonna do is pivot it up in just a second and attach to these on the side. Uh, so this is kind of one of those real world things I just wanted to touch on uh, because I know, you know when I'm going through and doing these things, uh, you always feel like you get kind of stuck in a situation where you need a buddy. Uh, so maybe this tip will help somebody else. So I have it all the way in. Uh, and per the instructions, they, uh, they actually send you wire nuts, which at first I was kind of hesitant about, but I really don't mind it. I don't think it's really gonna cause any issues. Uh, I'm gonna come back and tape these up. Uh, but for purposes of testing real quick, I'm gonna leave it. And like I said, again, this is the powered antenna optional cord, and this is your antenna female plug-in. However, I'm doing an extra step, and you'll notice that I have the head unit out. No, nothing is wrong with it. I'm just adding a subwoofer to it. Uh, so I had to come in to these RCA outs from the back of this head unit uh, and run some RCA cables, which go to my amp and the dash, and I have the behind the seat subwoofer. So, um, everything works on it. This right here is the, the LED controller. And so I got a little buttoning up left to do, but I am pretty well done uh, with the install. And I wanted to show you something really cool uh, that's gonna end up working nicely for me. So I got the LEDs and the speakers. I've also got whips and it, it did come with a remote so this is the remote it came with but this is the one i use for my whips and one thing you'll notice i ignore the towers those are about to come off is that when i switch colors so i go red the speakers in the actual stereo change too because they're both on an rf frequency it's a blue green so that's going to be awesome so everything's going to be in sync as i'm using it um i'll give you a quick tour kind of how it works uh, but i'm recording on my phone so we're going to switch to radio. Uh, so we've got the USB in, the three and a half auxiliary, everything up here. So this is the cab light. Uh, this is the, the master power for the radio. So you shut this off and the whole thing shuts off. And then this is for the LEDs and the speakers. And this is a fuse here and you've also got a 12 volt charger. So that's really nice. So now I've got a charger here, got a charger up here. And I've also got USB and AUX right there. So lots more options are being added with this thing. And then let's switch our source. So we're gonna go just to FM for a minute. Turn this way down until I can find a channel. So I do have the sub hooked up, so I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit and get out of the so I'm not going to bother with a sound demo because those just never work well on phones. Uh, plus I'm in a metal building and I don't have another Bluetooth device. But I will tell you this, um, if you're considering one of these quad pods and you're looking at potentially upgrading to the Rockford head unit, just the answer is do it. It puts out fantastic clean power. Uh, that was one of the things that I was talking on the phone about with Tony. He is the, the owner of the company and you know he just explained things pretty frankly to me and told me you know if, if money is not the issue just go ahead and do it it's going to give you really clean power that not, now that's not to say that their standard i believe it's a boss unit they use is not good it's just to say this is really good uh, and i'll give you my impressions and comparisons on both of them because i do have another unit that's going in a buddy's machine um, but yeah, if, if you have the ability to get the Rockford, just go ahead and do it. It's an awesome, awesome head unit, super easy to use, and uh, puts out great, great clean power. And then like I said, I did have to run uh, RCAs in to the RCA output here, which it's got three sets of RCA outputs, uh, two regular outs, and then one that can be used for a subwoofer. Uh, so no problem adding that. Just had to put a small hole in the back in which I have some grommets coming for it that I'm going to put there to kind of get that sealed off. Um, but if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I will include links to everything below to their website. Uh, pricing info is available on their website. Uh, I don't want to put something up and then you know, if they run sales or change prices, I don't want the, the video to be inaccurate. Um, but thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for future content.